Hello, and welcome to the Music Production Podcast, the show about all things making music. Anything related to it, we're happy to go into here. My name is Brian Funk. I am your host. I'm a musician, producer, Ableton certified trainer. Right now, you're hearing some music from one of my January 2020 jams. January 2020 is a challenge to make jams basically every day of January as best you can. This particular jam was made off of an experiment with a small guitar lick that I had on my computer. I isolated one of the notes and made that lead instrument sound you're hearing, as well as some of the pad sounds. Now what I'm doing with January is I'm using it as a way to create content for the Music Production Club. All of my members will get copies of all the projects I make, as well as all of the presets and the sounds and the samples. So far, I've given away the first half of January, and that includes about 50 different sounds and audio effects. There's stuff from the Korg MS-20, some of my other packs. I also went kind of deep with the OP-1, sampling some sounds I made for a series of ambient tracks that I made during January. I did four ambient tracks using only the OP-1 running into Ableton Live, and I sampled some of the recordings I made from the OP-1 tracks, and I think those came out really cool. I'm super happy about those. So if you're a member of the Music Production Club, you'll get all of my January jams, and currently you'll still get my Korg MS-20 Ableton Live pack. That contains 50 Ableton Live instruments made with samples of the Korg MS-20's oscillators. So check out the Music Production Club. That's brianfunk.com mpc. It's a great way to support my work and get a constant flow of stuff in your inbox all the time. Today's episode has to do with something I'm learning from January, this quest to try to make as much music as possible, basically share a piece of music every day if you can. I've done pretty well with the challenge. I've missed a few days, mostly due to doing the podcast, releasing free Ableton Live packs, and gathering all of my projects together and making them into a nice presentable package for the music production club. But I'm really getting a lot out of it and I'm enjoying it and I can feel the growth happening in myself as a producer. One of the things that I'm really interested and surprised about is just the power of focusing. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today and just give you something quick to think about. It's not going to be a long episode because I want to give you a chance to make some music and I need to do that myself. But I think we have probably enough time to do what we need to do. It's just a matter of, is our time focused? Now, to think that over two weeks now have gone by of January and so many people have done it every single day. I've done it for most of the days. It's very empowering because it shows you that if you focus and you pay attention, you can actually get stuff done. So I want to just reference something from one of my heroes in the world of creativity and making art. And that is, of course, Stephen Pressfield, author of War of Art and Do the Work and Nobody Wants to Read Your Shit three great books that'll inspire you. But he also has a blog at stephenpressfield.com. And one of his more recent posts is called Hit the Page Running. And the idea, and I'm just going to read maybe the first um, little part of it and then leave the rest for you to go check out, is he says, quote, my mantra when I finally sit down to work is hit the page running. What I mean by that is to plunge in immediately, first minute, first second, first millisecond. And why do I do this? Resistance. I don't want to give resistance the slightest opening to warm its way into my brain and start thinking. So his concept of resistance is really just this force that prevents us from doing our creative work. And I love this idea of just as soon as you get down ready to write, or in our case to make music, you get right to it. So it's ideal, I guess, if you have a spot you can go to to do your music, but when you decide to pull the trigger and actually spend some time to make music. It's so important to jump in right away and not let anything else come up before you get started. 
And truth be told, I violated this rule when I came down to do this podcast. I had this gift card I wanted to redeem. So I went online and I started trying to redeem it. And as I pulled off that secret code on the back, it ripped off some of the numbers and I couldn't see the pin number. And then I got, next thing I know, long story short, this is not interesting. And I'm sorry I'm wasting even more time talking about it than I already did doing it. But something I thought that was just going to take about a minute or two wound up taking me like 20 minutes and it set me back. And that's the danger of when you dilly-dally or you try something or you research or you go online, you check your email, whatever it is you do before you start making your music, is those things so easily balloon into longer things. And next thing you know, you've cut into all of the time that you have. So it's so important to just jump right in and start. And I found this actually because I've been live streaming all of my Januaries. And this has taught me a few really interesting things about focus. I'm, and I'm surprised by it because as soon as I start live streaming, although it does take a minute to set everything up, now though, I've got it all routine, I can do it pretty quick, but once I'm, once I'm live, it's like I'm on the hook, I'm accountable. And there may be people watching what I'm doing. So that just prevents me from doing any of these distracting activities. So I'm not going on the internet. I'm not browsing around, seeing if my favorite websites have been updated and then reading, video, reading articles, watching videos. I'm not checking my phone. I can't go on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that. Um, a big part of that is I use my phone as a camera, actually. So I can't even access my phone, which is even better. And... The fact that there might be people watching means I got to start doing something and I got to sort of make this as interesting as possible. I'm not necessarily advertising that these live streams are always thrilling, action-packed stuff to watch, but I need to get going. So it takes me out of this mindset of looking for distractions and gets me focused on actually producing some work. And because I have that focus, it changes the way I work a little bit. For instance, I very often go with the first idea that comes to my mind during these live streams. So you're forced to kind of pick something and go with it. I can't just keep trying out new things like I might ordinarily if I was by myself. I have to pick something that sounds reasonably good to me and go with it and accept it. So I'm throwing out this sort of critical judgmental side of me quite a bit in the interest of actually being productive and producing something worthwhile to anyone that might be watching. Live stream is a really powerful tool for this. I really did not have any idea it was going to be like this. So I recommend you give it a shot. Even if it's, say, um, it doesn't have to be super formal, maybe do like Instagram Live or something on Twitch, wherever you want to do your live stream. I'm doing YouTube just because that's what I've been doing for all these years, so I might as well just do my live streams there. But I think just putting yourself on the hook a little bit like that is a great way to make yourself actually get to work. And, um, you know, if it doesn't come out good, you could always delete it, I suppose. But um, it's, it's a real focusing tool, that's for sure. Now, when you're doing these jams every day, you are forced to pick an idea and go with it. And that's really powerful. It gives you a direction to go in. We don't always get that when we have maybe no real deadline or we're just kind of exploring and maybe we don't, no one's watching us or any of that kind of stuff. But I found the fact that you know you're going to do it just about every day, it allows you to start exploring ideas. So once you pick an idea, you can kind of go deep maybe for a few days, say. Now, I did this on days 11 through 14 where I did some ambient kind of uh, really mellow tracks. The idea for these tracks were basically if someone was, say, meditating or trying to fall asleep or maybe just want something in the background while you study or read, maybe. It's very um, uneventful music, really. There's not a lot going on melodically or rhythmically, but where there are some cool things happening is like timbrely. So the sounds are changing and shifting. And when you take away a lot of that other stuff, such as rhythm and melody, it gives the listener more room to focus on things like the type of sounds and the textures. And that was a really fun thing to explore for a few days. I thought I was just going to do it one day, but I decided that there was more to go in that 
arena of writing. So I spent four days doing it and it was fun. And I didn't feel like I was wasting time or I had too many other things I wanted to get to. It made it easier to commit because I was going to come back tomorrow on the next day. So what's kind of cool is that you can know that you're going to be exploring lots of different ideas throughout, say, these 30 days, but you can also kind of um, come across new things and focus on them a little bit and pay a little more attention to them. And I really scratched that itch for myself with this sort of ambient writing. And I think in the future, it might just be like a type of thing I do from time to time. Add that to the list of types of things I like to do. But now it's something else. Um, I've used a few tools that have helped me a lot for focusing. And I just want to shout them out. Um, I love using a timer. And the one I'm using is called Howl Timer. Howler Timer like how like a wolf. It's actually the icon for it is actually a wolf. It looks like a full moon, but it, the full moon is a clock behind it. And it's really it's just simple. You set it for a certain amount of time and it counts down. And that's helped me focus for say nights when I knew it was late and I had to kind of go to bed eventually. So it made having that like ticking down timeline made me realize I got to make decisions and I got to move forward and I got to do the best I can with what I've got. And surprisingly, I found that even if I wasn't completely convinced on an idea, by deciding to stick with it and focus on it, I'm able to finesse that idea and make it into something better. So the decisions I make later on in the track become a little more informed and kind of help make it a better piece of music, which is kind of empowering if you think about it really because you know that you can take an idea and make it a little better as you work on it which is a lot of fun so i've used howler timer to maybe limit the amount of sound design i do or the amount of time i search for sounds or or the amount of time i build a beat for instance and then when it goes off i'm done and i move on to the next step of the process i also like using an internet blocker one that I've been using on Mac is called self-control and it just blocks the internet for you. Now I can't do that when I'm live streaming really because I need the internet, but the live stream itself is kind of an internet blocker already because no one wants to watch me go on the internet and just surf around. And, um, it's, it's just like kind of an automatic self-control internet blocker by being live. But if you're not going to go live, try something like self-control that will just turn off your internet for a certain amount of time and force you to keep going. I think another thing you can do to help focus is tell other people that you're working now. Let them know. For me, again, like since my phone is my camera, I'm kind of unreachable because I can't see my phone. It's above, so I can't really see what's going on on there. And I don't get calls and messages. So, um, you know, by doing that, it's sort of like turning off your phone in a way. But telling people that you're working is important because it shows that you're trying to focus and you're trying to take something seriously. And they might not respect that at first. But once you get going, once you start taking it seriously yourself, people start to respect that. You sort of have to prove it first, though. But by showing that you're going to do this thing every day or every so often and you need a certain amount of time all the time to work on it, people tend to just know that, like, okay, this is your time for making your music. You do it maybe, um, I don't know, every other day for two hours or whatever you want to do. Your Jamuaries happen at 7 o'clock every night, so you know, you're not going to be available. It's almost like having an appointment. Put it on the calendar. Make an appointment for yourself, and you will focus, and others will honor those commitments. And in the name of focusing, I think we're going to end this episode now and just want you to think about a little bit how you can focus on things. And when we focus, we really clear out a lot of the other things around us. We don't let other things in. And as much as that applies to the distractions outside of making music, it also applies to all of those little distractions within making music. The tutorials, the new plugins, the other genres of music we could be writing right now. 
we focus on it and then all those things kind of go away and we can pay closer to t- attention to what we're actually doing and make it better. I hope you are getting some time to make music and if not, make some time, put it on your calendar and jump in on the January challenge. Right now it's January 19th, but that's not too late. You can get a profound effect out of this in 10 days for sure. This, and there's more than that. There's what, about 12 days, almost two weeks of January left. In that amount of time, you can really prove a lot to yourself that you can in fact do it every day if you are committed, that you can come up with something and that you can finish things. And that's another part of the Jan- January thing I love is that it takes you through the whole process of making a track every single day. Even if you're not going nuts, mixing it to the T's and mastering it perfectly, which you're probably not. I know I'm not, but it's still taking me through the process all the time and getting me thinking about arranging and getting me thinking about getting a halfway decent mix. What are like the quickest things I can do to get there? You know, what do I get the most bang for my buck out of, so to speak? I hope this helps a little bit, and I hope to hear some of the things you are doing. I'll be looking at those January 2020 hashtags, especially on Instagram. It's a great source of inspiration. And if you are a member of the Music Production Club, check out the Discord. We're, we have a really awesome January 2020 thread going, and I'm learning a lot about the type of music people are making, and it's great to interact and Um, learn and be inspired by each other. It's really turning into a super cool community. And I thank all you guys that are in there for that. So now it's time for me to finish up this podcast, get it posted online, and then start my own January for the day. So thanks a lot for listening and have a great day.